India has announced a forward looking semiconductor policy. The industry is excited, so are Indians. I have with me Mr. Ajay Chaudhary, the founder of HCL, the pioneering computer company for India, and today a leading voice on semiconductors. Ajay Sahib, this semiconductor policy which has been announced, does it excite you? Oh, very exciting. For the first time, the government has done a lot of discussions before launching it. And therefore, as a result, the detailing that it, that's gone into it is very good. And the scope is also fantastic. So I think this time, the, even the, what has been taken care of is that the incentives provided are really, really attractive. So that I feel that this time, semiconductors will definitely happen. Why does India need a semiconductor foundry or a semiconductor ecosystem? Are we big guzzlers of semiconductors? There is no country that doesn't guzzle semiconductors today. If you look at just uh, the devices that we use, phones and things like that, eh, amazing amount of semiconductors. Even a car today would have anywhere between 2,000 to 3,000 chips. So, you know, there is every product. In, can you tell me a single product that doesn't have a chip? So, you know, that's the situation today. So, the requirement for chips is very high in the country. And the second issue is that we are in a serious geopolitical situation with China. And we must be very clear that if we do not make our own hardware supply chain, you are going to be subjected to all kinds of problems. So, for example, in a chip, there can be a backdoor. And China could be taking away any data from you. So, you know, it's very critical that a large country like ours must have a semiconductor facility. So, do you think setting up a fab is very necessary for India? Absolutely necessary. We must have the full ecosystem from design to manufacturing. We already have a lot of designing in India. Lots of people design in India for the global market, but we hardly design anything for India. So I think it's very important that we need to encourage people to design and that is part of the policy this, this time. Now, you, have, you have spoken about something called a hole in the hole. Mm -hmm. Now can you explain to us what that means and if a fab and semiconductor are made in India, are there enough c companies which are making electronic parts or electronic goods which will consume them? There are a lot of global companies in India who are making parts and products but these products when they are designed in south korea or designed in china or designed in america they typically buy american components and therefore they will end up buying Am american semiconductors so i think what is very critical parallel to creating this whole ecosystem of semiconductors we have to also bring back indian brands and we need to have products that are designed in india manufactured in india if they are designed in india then we will use indian components and indian sub assemblies indian pcbs and indian semiconductors so that's the very critical part of making the whole ecosystem work we need to bring HCL back to its glory. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Why Th not? That was the that was the big computers everybody in yeah. India used like me. People were born using HCL computers actually. <laughs> Correct. And after that, we seem to have lost it somewhere. And and today, see, we also have a semiconductor complex in, uh, in Mohali in Chandigarh area. Yeah. Do you think that fits into a bigger ecosystem, oh, or yeah. is it a too small, uh, too specialized a facility? You see, it's a very small facility and today it's hardly used. It's been used for very special requirements of space, nuclear, defense, etc. But now that it's been moved to the Ministry of Electronics, I think you will see a major change because they intend to upgrade it. They're also looking for uh, somebody to come in and be a strategic partner for it. So there are a lot of opportunities there. And although it's 180 nanometers, etc., etc., but if it can be upgraded, then there's enough demand for that kind of product. For example, uh, LED driver chip could be easily manufactured there. And the, if you look at LEDs in the country, these are made in crores. So the total you know, production of semi, you know, LEDs in the country is around 60 to 80 crores. So imagine you could have a requirement of 60, 80 crore chips. Now, Vedanta has announced that they would 
probably be setting up a fab in collaboration. Uh, does that excite you? Yeah, it's a very good idea because I think Taiwan is far ahead in semiconductors and it would be a good idea for them to collaborate with a Taiwanese company. And uh, I think Vedanta wants to uh, specialize in display area. So that's the area that they will go after because displays, we are importing everything today. And tell me which product doesn't have a display. You know, so whether it's a car or a phone or a motorcycle, everything has a display. You know. Did we lose out a lot of time in getting to where we are trying to go? Oh, definitely. I think we have lost 20 to 30 years unnecessarily. I've been very deeply involved with the government in various governments in the past also and now too in advising the government on going after semiconductors. But somehow or the other, we never put together a policy which was attractive enough. I think this is the first time we have a policy which is very attractive and is going to draw the investments that we are really looking for. And is it supported enough by ministerial firepower in the government? Oh, definitely. We, have, we are very lucky that we have two ministers and both of them are technical people. And, and that helps? Oh, definitely. Because they really understand what all of us are talking about. And, and, and going forward, see, fabs are very specialized where you fabricate chips. They require a lot of water. Yeah, yeah. They, they need lots of specialized conditions yeah. in which you can yeah. do. Chemicals, can, chem gases, chemicals, all that. Yeah. Do you think we'll be able to provide that kind of an ecosystem in a local place where they can come up? Oh, yes. I think that's not a problem because uh, you, you'll be surprised that there are at least five, six states that are competing to get semiconductor facilities and they're all giving incentives, additional incentives for people to come and invest. People have identified locations. For example, I know Gujarat, they've already identified an exact location where they want a semiconductor plant. So, semiconductor fabrication, a big future for India? Terrific, terrific. Because I think uh, we, have the, we have the design capability. And I think that is the biggest benefit that I India has. So with design to manufacture, the whole situation becomes complete. And Prime Minister Modi backing it helps? Oh, definitely. It's his pet project. <laughs> and, and, and do you think, when, how soon can we have these fabs? I think uh, you should be able to see a GAN fab in about a couple Which of years. Which is a gallium arsenic. Yes, gallium arsenic. GAN, GAN fab in about a couple of years. You should be able to see packaging units come up next year. And you should be able to see silicon happen in about three to four years. So exciting times. Very exciting times for the first time in India. And I'm personally very excited. So that was Mr. Ajay telling us how excited he is about the new semiconductor policy and how the new chip fabricating units which may come up in India could help in what is called a self-reliant and an Atmanirbhar Bharat India. India cannot remain a colony of China for chips. India needs to have its own ecosystem of chips. And who better to tell us than somebody who founded HCL Technologies. My first computer came from HCL, hardware from HCL. So hopefully, when he pushes it, we may see a huge incentive-led push on making semiconductors in India. In New Delhi, Pallav Bagla.